the uh, Public Works, Parks, Recreation, Railroad Committee to order. First thing, we need approval of the committee meeting minutes. I'll move that. Supervisor Loeb. Seconded by Supervisor Frazier. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those carried. Okay, with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Benway. I'll turn it over to Mr. Major. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know if you... <laughs> just, just real quickly, uh, Justin Gagno was going to be here today, but they send their regrets. They can't make it. They're trying to get the Sanford, line, or Sanford Lake line open so that they can get all the cars that they have in storage out of here. So they, he will not be here today, but he will be here for that Friday meeting that we have. Or th I'm sorry, Thursday meeting we have next week. Thank you. Okay, first thing I have is a resolution to increase fees at the Up Yon Environmental Center. We haven't done that in almost 10 years. Um, it would increase our fees and generate about 2,600 to 3,000 in uh, revenue. So I've asked to uh, increase public and school programs uh, from four to five, increase parking fees from September to June up to five, and then in July in the peak season to August for parking for six dollars and leave everything else alone. Okay, would someone like to move that? Supervisor Loeb, second by Supervisor Frazier. <coughs> Discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those carried. The second resolution I have is for standardization of fish food. Um, the threshold for our contract was increased from, from 10,000 to 20,000, so we were forced to do the three quote system. Well, we have a, a, an actual, I, I included on page uh, three, is it, actually, I'm sorry, four, that has our proteins and fats, our, our actual makeup of our food. Uh, one company in particular, Melon Aquafeed, is the only one that responds that can meet that demand within the criteria of two weeks to uh, supply for six months. The other one is Ziegler, which they do not. Um, we've looked into doing state contract piggyback with them. It's solely for them, so we cannot use them. And Bio Oregon is, is actually out in the state of Oregon, and they're like three times as expensive. And they can make this uh, this uh, quantity and, and uh, process, but uh, like I say, by the time we pay shipping and everything, so basically, I just like to standardize. When we need food, we do it three times a year. Uh, we spend anywhere from ten to eleven thousand dollars for fish food, depending how soon we stock. Um, if it's an early season, we don't need as larger quantities. Like this year, we're going to kind of possibly go over the late season with the snow and ice, so that's what I'm proposing to do. Okay, Supervisor Dickinson moves that, seconded by Supervisor McGowan. Any discussion? Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. Okay, then for up for discussion, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Hajos for the uh, luxurious camping RFP. Thanks, Tim. Uh, as you are aware, at board meeting we discussed uh, the proposer, the one proposer we had. Um, I think Supervisor Bramer brought it up. We only had one proposer for the glamping. Uh, it was at Adirondack Safari Tent Company, the same one that we had had last year. Uh, we did this RFP based on a best value method, so there was a criteria that we rated them on. Again, they were the only ones. Uh, one of those, one of the criteria that was part of that RFP was cost. It wasn't necessarily the highest, but it was in there. And, and one of the things that they had put down for a cost was $160 per day. Now, last year, Adirondack Safari was there on site. Uh, we actually entered into a facility agreement with them for $200 a day, uh, but they've come back this year from the proposal and asked for $160 a day. Say that again? Yeah. They offered less than they did last year. I thought I thought our fees were higher than what they did last year. I thought our fees were our fees. Yeah. Why wouldn't we include that? Well, our our fees for the fairgrounds are actually it would be even less than this. Our fees for the fairgrounds are hundred and fifty dollars a day. Last year, since it was a facilities use agreement, uh, or a <coughs> service agreement that we did as opposed to doing the RFP, uh, both uh, the Warren County, what is it, the bike? 
the bike rally, bike rally as well as Warrensburg for, bike right, Warrensburg bike rally and the Adirondack Safari both paid a fee of $200 per day. But our fees are typically, which was done back in 2007, $150 a day. Supervisor Loeb? Question, is this something that they're offering 100? We had said 200, they're saying, well, we'd rather do 160. No. We didn't, this is the first year we went out to proposals <coughs> for this. I think it was a recommendation by Mary to put it out for a proposal. Uh, last year, it wasn't a proposal. They approached us and asked us. No, it came from the committee. <laughs> yeah. The committee wanted this. Or, or, well, uh, that's fine. I, but, I, yeah. but Mike, I, I don't want to debate this, but why would we put out a proposal? <coughs> Except less money than we got last year. We didn't. We didn't. No, we we set it hoping to get possibly more money. We let them dictate how much they want if there was multiple bidders. But the resolution right now says that we pay one hundred and fifty dollars for the entire facility. So when Mr. Mat uh, Matteo came last year, he automatically offered two hundred dollars for this great right. big package he gave us. So this year we put in our, we know it starts at 150, let's see what we can get. He was the only person that bid on this and he's trying to reduce it. I don't know if he knows that he's the only, but uh, he reduced it down to 160. But the way we did it, aren't we able to negotiate any of this? We, we are. are. This is oh, a, okay, so we're going to negotiate. Right. I wouldn't accept less money than last year. I wouldn't either. That's why we brought it to you. No. Yeah. That's why we brought it to you. I'm not on a committee, but just from a practical <coughs> standpoint. That's so, my feeling also. Right. And as I had said in the board meeting, this is a proposal, so we can negotiate with, with Mr. Mateo. Mr. McGowan? And how many days in total are we looking? Uh, 110. 110 days? Yeah. And uh, before uh, Glamping came in, uh, how many times would we rent it out? Um, on the average between 10 and 14 times a year and Warrensburg bike rally being our largest which we increased him from uh, two two hundred dollars he used to pay the 150 this year he'll be paying 200 and every year for the next four years we increased it by five percent and they're there sir, for seven days all right uh, ten. ten days ten days Correct. So let's say we, we rent that out for uh, a maximum of 20 days uh, on an average a year, say, mm -hmm. and so that's that's 90 more, you know, dollars. So I mean, uh, on negotiating this, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at a substantial amount of money. So how do we negotiate? Uh, last year, how many uh, days did he uh, snag it up? He was a little less last year. I don't think it was a full 110 days. Correct. Um, so, so if we, you know, uh, they offer 160, uh, we want 200, a compromise of 180, with the, the proposal going up uh, five five percent a year. Yes, no. It's a I one year proposal, that. right? A one year. One year with options to bring it back to you to to go the full five years. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Would he entertain a four-year contract with ten dollars a year increments or something like that, starting at one sixty, one seventy, and going up for the next four years? That way, we know yeah. four years we have one hundred and ten days locked in at a certain price. Correct. The RFP, what we did was uh, fifty percent up front, fifty percent halfway. Uh, to, uh, Mr. Conover mentioned to have a two thousand dollars security deposit, so anything happened or whatnot, we could take that money and fix lawns or fences or anything like that. We would we put in the same thing, do the septic systems, you supply all your own uh, products for your showers, restrooms. So yes, it could it could escalate. He has assuming he, he had a good year last year, I'm assuming, right? So Oh, he lost money? Yeah, he said that it would take him three to seven okay. years depending on how many right. people showed before he started going into you know the green. So why wouldn't he want a four-year contract? He did. He did. Yeah. I was going to say he we turned the, the, the committee just, turned him down. He did want a five-year. He wanted a five-year. The very contract. first year he wanted a four-year contract. No, no. This, when he came back, he asked us for a, a long extended contract. November. And the committee turned him down. 
what, what was that? What was you offering for that? Huh? How much was you offering for that? He didn't. I don't think they had. I don't think, yeah, I don't think we were right. that. But I would have thought that we would have got the same amount of money as we got the first year to extend the contract. Right. But I guess. I why why wouldn't we do the same as what we do for Mr. Zibro, two hundred dollars a year, and if he wants to negotiate for a four year, then you add the five percent like we did for Mr. Zibro. Uh, Matt, I was. But but you're getting one hundred and eighty lot. So there's also is there anything with an extension you want to kind of give. One thing you're doing, though, that you need to recognize is also you're you're taking out the opportunity for anything else coming in there mm -hmm. during that period. But history has shown that we haven't had much of I think it's a long time. <laughs> 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 um, I, I, I would make a motion that we accept is 160 and tell them we're willing to go to a four-year contract and we'll go up 5% every year for four years and lock them into it. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Supervisor McGowan. Okay, discussion. If, if he's concerned about do, doing that, then oh, he needs to add something to the contract saying he can, he can void the contract and whatever it is. If he doesn't make money again this year, he's not going to get lost. Sure, Mr. Sokol. Thank you. Who's doing the negotiation? Is it something that we have to put forth as a resolution or can you just go back to him and say, hey, look, the committee feels like it's it's to your advantage to do a four-year contract, would you be comfortable with 160 at 5%? And we could do that. And we would do that. Okay, so we don't need to make a resolution. Resolution will write it down as four. Where does notice of award? We just haven't awarded them. Supervisor Loeb? Hold on. I think the chairman. The committee gets done. Actually, Supervisor Bramer was earlier. Well, you're on the committee, so I'm oh, letting okay. the committee members. Um, as I recall from the meeting in November or December, they, they were really pressing us for an extended contract. Asking to be part of everything in their mind, so that they could plan, and that they were very uncomfortable financially putting their money on the table if they didn't have a four or five year contract. So I guess then the question is, uh, is this part of the RFP, or are we still looking at one year? Because I know, based on that, they would. I think with Mr. Everything. I think with Mr. Dickinson's motion or uh, resolution, yeah, motion was to offer an extended agreement for the, you know, an increased term at a specified rate. So I think that gives, you know, if this passes, it gives our department the ability to negotiate that up to within those parameters. Right. Well, I, I, actually, I, I, I'm going to withdraw my resolution. Uh, I, I think we should leave it up to the uh, uh, negotiate this thing and go back and tell us what it is. I don't want to put any limits on it. I so think, the I, I think it's a real asset for us to have 110 days. So both of you want to withdraw the you second it? Yeah, I withdraw the. Uh, okay. I I, 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 really, I don't want to keep going back and forth like a three-legged horse here. Uh, he's our guy. Have him go out and negotiate whatever he can for this, and then bring him back with him. Okay. Claudia? I want to say it's, do they have upwards of 60 tons? I don't think last year he maybe had 20 that I remember being on site. His, his, I'm sorry, what was the question? How, How many tons total? 40 last year. Okay. It's over 200. 239 or 259. Um, but he has a big investment. Yeah, but it, but I I believe there's also a feeding and there you know there's a lot more in, involved to glamping. I mean you yeah. I mean you're, it's, it's, so we we really can't delay this either because right. you know he needs to move forward. So I, I found in, in the RFP we put for the time and duration of of services. 
we went all the way to 2022 and it says that at the time an increase in daily occupancy payment to the county can be negotiated so we did go a long term and we put this out there so okay. it's good oh. You're on five All the way to 22. You can, you can negotiate. Yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mr. Beatty. Yeah, um, the fact that he's going to do 100 days, and you're telling me right now we only run it out 10 to 14 days. Correct. He, that's, that's a huge negotiating position on his part. Pigs get fed and hogs get slaughtered. I think, uh, I think uh, the fact that well, he's going to make that commitment to 100 days at maybe a lower rate. It makes sense to me. Um, and uh, uh, I agree with you, Kevin. I think you're the guy who should negotiate this. I agree with Mr. Dickinson. And, 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 and didn't he say he wanted a five-year contract? I said yeah. yes. yes. And I heard sworn he said, I don't want to do anything under a five-year contract. Yes, he did. He stood right up there, and I remember that. And so I just... My two cents would be, you, you look at it from a five-year contract position, and that's what he's going to, you know, and, and whether it's 160 and then five or 7% increase, whatever you guys negotiate, but that 100 days is huge in my opinion. So, and if it's over five years, that's that's, that's big. So. Okay, so you guys have the ability to move this forward. Okay. I'm sorry. It's just an off-the-cuff question. You know, you know I've been kicking around keeping an eye on occupancy tax rates and sales tax rates and other things and stuff that are falling behind all the other counties and stuff. Now, I know we can't charge off tax to camping. That was in our original state, the state law when we got the 4%. But how about the sales tax in those stores? I, have, I was up at that moment. Yeah, nice little store there with t-shirts and all kinds of stuff and stuff like that. There's no way we can make them charge sales tax. Well, they should be. Should be charging sales tax, yeah. Does anybody know what he's doing? There's clamping and glamping. Glamping, Yeah, glamping is, is more glorified. Well, those people are paying $250 a night to sit in a tent. More than I get in my place, I can use that place. Yeah. 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 They want to see the site you know, before they make a, a decision, okay. but that's extended. So he has one, one more full year before they make a determination in October. Okay. And we're covered with that determination. If he doesn't get the uh, park agency permit, then our contract would be no, voided. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. The only consideration. same time we've left pavilion three that's the part of south that pavilion is for use strictly by the public all year long and then during the uh, 4-h has a youth there and that building and all their stuff is off limits he doesn't even get to use it all year so that's strictly for cce we, we talked to them said what is your demand they get the cb pavilion like a designated line and they're not even allowed to use it at all. Yes. No use. Period. Mr. Conover? Yeah, I'm not sure what the specifications are, but I, I think I prefer um, a one year with uh, uh, four possible extensions and as opposed to locking in a five that allows us to exit should we feel the need to have access. 
And quite frankly, it allowed him to do the same, right? Things weren't going to work out for him, it allowed him to do the same. I'm more comfortable with that than I am with the to absolutely wrong. Okay, thank you. We'll move right along into the... Okay, I'll turn it back My over again, event. once again to Mr. Hajos for Thank National Grid. Thank you, Tim. We just received a set of plans probably within about the past month from National Grid. Um, they are requesting to put a gas line along the bike path in the city of Glens Falls. I think it's approximately 3,500 feet. Uh, they were looking to get approval from us. Uh, at first, we had looked at this as no different than one of our, our roads uh, and within right away that National Grid or Verizon or Time Warner can, can put those utilities within our right away as long as they get a uh, highway right away permit. On the bike path, we don't have that. The bike path is a facility. Uh, we have we have actual rates uh, along the bike path uh, for certain individuals that we enter into an agreement with them because they have uh, Cooper's Cave as a deck on our property so we have a service agreement with them and they pay us a fee every year. Uh, I don't have the fee schedule in, in your packets, but I had taken a look at some of the other fees that we had are associated with the bike path. Uh, we have it for, uh, sorry, for like wire crossings, uh, pull on anchors, uh, typically like $50 a year. For pull on anchors, it's $60 a year per pole. If it's under the path, typically it's $75 per year crossing. So I, I brought it to the committee just to discuss it. As far as their work and their plans, uh, they're, they're approximately three feet off the bike path. Uh, I think they're probably 24 inches deep minimum for this gas line. Uh, they will have an MPT, maintenance protection of, I say traffic, for pedestrians. They'll close the bike path down when need be with advance warning to us. Uh, I guess I'm coming to committee to ask if you want to continue along the fee lines that we have. Uh, we also have that bike path on National Grid property in certain areas. I think Tim can birds all up birds to all up to almost Route 9 adjacent to Maltby's. There's a section through Lexington where they're going uh, down to Sanford. So we uh, we have an agreement with them from 1979. And they, they originally put it in. And they don't charge us to be on their property. It's just needs that, that we have with them. So, right, and that's why I brought it to committee to see what the committee would like to do. Supervisor McGowan. But, you know, in all fairness, uh, you know, we, we are a nonprofit organization. So, I mean, we're not charging, as I understand, but that is a profitable organization. So I, I would feel that, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm following your fee schedule. Uh, I want to say under track crossings, I mean, typically they have, an, or under track, under the, the path itself, uh, $75 a year, but this is a linear. I don't necessarily, Tim, did we have a linear on that? No. We, no. we don't. There is no linear fee. I mean, this is for 3,500 feet of, of the bike path. It is a long ways. Okay, Supervisor Bramer, you can speak now. No. It's adjacent to. It's not under. Right. This would be adjacent. Adjacent, three foot off on the shoulder. Yeah. Uh, Lexington Street, all the way to Cooper, right. and then they're gonna. They've been working with the City of Glens Falls. Um, they're going to go from Cooper all the way to the Civic Center across <coughs> to, I believe that's Mohegan to Oak Street. Yes. So they're going quite a ways. It's a major project. No laterals. It's just bringing just a straight main gas. Just line. bringing gas up to Lexington. There's no laterals going to homes, businesses. It's just to increase the demand. Supervisor Dickinson. So it's the trunk line. Are they never going to put any laterals in here. You know what they're telling us. I have a, a concern. Uh, we've had some damage to the bike path uh, in Lake Jordan. And the repairs have been the Western Stellar, right. Central Asphalt. So, uh, we have any of that in there? Oh, correct. 
as as part of the permit, uh, we do have details and sections of how they will restore the bike path. Uh, it's all it's all part of the permit. That's all. Yep. Right. Okay. <coughs> I don't have any problems charging something useful. National Grid has been very good to work with on a lot of projects. We 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 run there right away on a lot of projects, and sometimes with the snowmobile pass and stuff like that. And I don't think they charge us anything to do that. I mean, I think you should try to work with with them because if you start to ding them, they could hit us back for every time we're crossing one of their right ways. I mean, and right, they they're the ones that broke through my sewer line. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they do. They do a lot to allow the snowmobiles run on their right of ways. And, and, uh, and it, Supervisor Merlino? I, I agree with Kevin. I mean, even if you want to talk to Kevin about how the one-shot deal is not something like do it every year. I'd rather let it, let it happen as long as they follow your rules. And you have to get an agreement on the sign. You'd be off the bike way, so you got that in there. $75 you know, or $100 million. That's a good relationship like Kevin said. Is that a one-time thing or is it a fee? Actually, most of the fees that we charge on okay. are annual fees. I'm sorry. No, I just... Well, that's, that's hard enough. Right, like it. Don't tax national grid for that. And again, as I, I started off, we, National Grid, Time Warner, Verizon, are along all our roadways and we don't charge them a thing. We would do that right away. It, the only reason we brought this to the committee because it's a facility, it's not considered the same right away as along our, as our highway right away is. I, I, I agree with Kevin. I don't think we should probably charge them. Uh, my only concern, as I said, is any damage. Was everybody supervisor Lowe? Uh, just on the on an operational aspect, do you, do you know how long the bike trail is going to be out of service? <laughs> but they're going to go from block to block. So they have a detour plan that you just go around while they're operating in that. And then they'll pick up and hopscotch all the way until they... We have a lot of restrictions as part of that permit too, that they can't do it during certain times or they have to get it open at the end of every day. They want to get going now to prevent that. Sometimes. Well, we already have a precedent. We have a utility along the roads. We don't charge them. Utility doesn't seem to be any different than what we have. Last. Two Conover. Yeah. The um, utilization of uh, their property for some of our recreational trails uh, is that uh, now forever, or is are there um, covenants uh, where uh, they can? deny that should they have use for the property, what what exactly are the provisions of their allowing us to utilize their property for those purposes? I think that whatever those provisions are, at the very minimum, we should reflect that in our, in our offering. So if they have exit provisions, we would want exit provisions. If they have uh, limitations, I could do limitations as opposed to just needed right now and forever. I would, I would at least think we should look at how they provide the price to us uh, so that we are familiar with, with them. I can provide the contract to Mary to look at. I have it in my office. Okay. That'll be good. Okay. The okay. last we'll item I have is uh, Spring. Springs Inc. Last page. Okay, open to the public once again. This will be our third annual. It's been getting bigger and better, I believe, myself every year. Mr. Simpson's been there. Uh, it'll be Saturday, May 12th. And see anybody come. It's a great event. Kids love it. It is. It's a great time. Hopefully we have good weather. Yeah, better weather this year. 
Uh, 9 a.m. 9.30, I'm sorry, it says. Mr. Loeb? Mostly it's kids program. No, oh no, oh, no I see it says adults, but yeah, we, we do a uh, fly tying, we do uh, casting. <laughs> They come, you can help us cook hot dogs. Ah, hot dogs, yeah. that's quite an operation. Yeah, yeah. Serve lunch. Pretty good deal. And make the plan. Right. Bring your cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we provide yeah. them for you. Okay. okay, thank you. With that, we'll move right into the PPW portion of our meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On page two, uh, these are our annual contracts. Uh, the first one is for uh, cold in place recycling. This is a, a hammer mill method. If, if some of you aren't familiar with that method, uh, it's sort of a, a milling operation, uh, but it's very deep milling. milling. Uh, this is used basically on any of the roads that we have large cobbles or large stone or bedrock. Uh, they can get upwards of 18 inches deep to break out the road and provide us a good look up base. Okay, Mr. Sokol has moved, made a motion to move you're not on our committee. Nah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to Mr. Conover. I'll make my motion. Mr. Frazier made a motion for resolution or uh, number two, four, and six. Supervisor Dickinson second it. Any discussion? Just a question for my own information. What? Eighteen inches. That's Where would they do something like this? What do they do? They take it up? They it's, it no, it's, it's not. It's actually not dug up. When I say a milling operation, it's basically like a milling head that has teeth on it. These are very large teeth, uh, and typically what they'll end up doing is they'll, if, if, as the term refers to, a hammer. They hammer up the road and break it up. Provides a stronger subbase. With the, they break it down into material that's perfect for a road base. What they'll end up doing is they'll break off the first twelve inches, then they'll windrow it and then they'll break off, say, another six inches to provide us a, just a solid sub-base. And then we typically put four to six inches of pavement over the top of it. So the, the uh, machine mm -hmm. moves over, you have a road that the way it ever looks and when it's coming out the back, it's nice. It's nice. It's, yeah, it's, it, as we refer to it as like an item four type of material, gravel type of material. When we do that, we have to see. I can I let you know. It. Very dusty, loud. It is loud. It's it, it, not very smooth behind it either. They do. And this is, this is typically done by a contractor. Our guys are typically just there to maybe pull some of the, the bonier material out of the road uh, that they can't break up. Uh, and then we come back in and pave it afterwards. But if you'd like, I'll, I'll let you know when it's going on. Bring it up there. Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The next three on page 7, 8, and 9 are notice of intent to backfill. Uh, the first one is for a senior engineering tech. Uh, he has resigned. Uh, he actually went to work for Essex County. Uh, the next one is our MEO medium number three. He actually has gone to work as a building maintenance worker. He's transferred down there. And our last one is the superintendent of public works due to resignation. I'll move 7 and 8. Okay. Do we have a second to that? Supervisor Frazier? Any discussion? You raise your hand. I'm wondering, um, on eight, do we feel like that person is that? He is needed. Uh, this was a loss of, he wanted to transfer out of DPW. Uh, he's definitely needed, especially going into the construction season. Uh, we actually will start hiring our temporary soon. Uh, this is the last open position that we have uh, for an MEO, and then all our attempts will start to come in. But he's a that that position is a needed position. Uh, they operate most of the medium to heavier equipment on, on most of the jobs. Um, um, thank you, Chair. On nine, <laughs> um, we haven't gotten a nine yet. We haven't gotten a nine oh, yet. Okay. <coughs> We're still on seven eight. Okay, are we ready to call the question? Yeah, hurry up. Okay, call the question. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Go, Cody. You want to go? Claudia? Oh, I asked what the process was. <laughs> That's what I want to know. 
process is that we have to... Normally we, uh, we post for every position and seek applicants. That's the way we've done for every position. And that, that was our intent, was to post for the position and interview applicants and then choose somebody. Unless the board or the, wants to change the process. <coughs> Certainly is. I, you know, yeah, I've just tried to stay. All I've done is tried to stay consistent with every position since January. We've done the same thing on every position. If uh, the board chooses that they want to do, or the committee chooses they want to do something different, you can present it to the board. But we're gonna we're gonna post, we're gonna interview, and then we would choose. Well, it seems to me that we follow our same procedure. Uh, yeah, we'll fast track it. Administrator. Makes sense. I hope to get this process done before the end of April. Health department. Supervisor Bramer. Our approval. Supervisor Dickinson. I, I, I'm always amazed when we do this thing. Uh, you have people working for you that are qualified to prove themselves. Uh, they get an opportunity to move up and we put it out for the, put it out for the open public. I, 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 I don't understand. Supervisor Fraser? Well, I have to say, I agree with Dennis. You, you have uh, somebody... You didn't want to agree with you. Oh, yes, I did. Because no. I want to go into the executive session to talk about it? Uh, yeah, I think we, I would like to do that, yeah. I'll second that. Is that, is that okay? Oh, uh, okay. Can you make the motion here? No. I can't. No. Okay, we need a, need somebody here first. Supervisor McGowan, seconded by Supervisor Dickinson. Going into executive session to discuss. Employment history. Employment history, personal performance of a particular. I assume that's what you're talking about. Take a vote. Right there. All No action taken in executive session. Um, okay, as far as number nine, is John still out there or no? Okay, as far as number nine, we have a resolution notice of intent to backfill the position, Superintendent of Ohio Public Works. Moved by Supervisor Loeb. Go to second. Anybody want to move that? <laughs> that go in the position. Oh my God! That just gives the board permission to <laughs> fill the spot. Out. You're not. You can I'll, still do I'll the process. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Dickinson. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? There's a lot of discussion. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Salary. Also, we did have discussion. Salary will be negotiable. Negotiable. Supervisor Dickinson. Can I make a motion to fill the position? You can. Uh, with a specific person? Yes. Oh. You're okay. entitled. I can't stop you. From uh. <laughs> I'm not getting anywhere. I would like to, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. No, I, I. I feel strongly about this, and I, I made my feelings known, and I'm going to follow through on it. I. I think it is the proper thing to do to fill from within when you have a very viable, experienced, knowledgeable candidate. Uh, and for that reason, I, I would like to uh, make a motion that we consider Kevin K. Jones as a replacement for this position. Do we have a second? Supervisor Merlino. Any discussion? Supervisor Lowe. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for this. Uh, I hate to put Kevin in a position, or any of us in a position at this point, but we do have a process that we've practiced uh, over the past, uh, especially over the past month. Uh, specifically, let's take an example of uh, the health department, where we had a very uh, capable uh, long-term employee who had to go through the process. 
that was no reflection on that uh, candidate. I think for the county uh, to be consistent and protect our plot, ourselves as a board of supervisors and our reputation that it would be appropriate to go through the process. So uh, I would vote no only uh, along that line without a reflection on the council. Supervisor Dickinson. We, we have a process and this is part of the process. We, we have somebody that we would like to fill the position with as a proven entity. Therefore, to advertise it and go out and bring other people in would be a supreme waste of time. Claudia? Um, I want to echo what Supervisor Lowe said. I do not I do not know why we would divert from our prior process of going through, you know, posting the position, seeing if there are other interested applicants out there or not, without um, reflecting anything on whether or not our uh, current deputy, that's what we call it, is, you know, the performance of this particular job. Um, I think it strengthens the county to go through the process and have the best applicant come out of that, whether that person is from them within or from without. And I, I, I feel strongly that we should maintain our consistency there and go through the process and go through the job and seeking qualified applicants from within and from without. I would just like to add that it's either or, and in the past, there has been superintendents that have on the same path. With that, any other discussion? <laughs> Are we ready for the question? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay. Move we adjourn. Supervisor yeah, Merlino. <coughs> Any of the numbers of all the ones that have something, you got the full board, so they still get the right to vote on it. Right. Um, everybody can have a chance to vote on it one way or the other. Supervisor Bramer. My only point there, Supervisor Marlino, is that if for some reason this that motion we just passed fails and we've wasted all this time, you're going to waste an entire month where we could have posted right away today. We could have posted it today, gone through the interview the first week of April, like Okay, moving on through the agenda. We're going into the, well, let Kevin handle the household hazardous waste. Yeah, the last thing we have is, uh, we have a, we've had for the past two years, uh, household hazardous waste day. Uh, we've held it in May, typically in Warrensburg, and then June, uh, typically in Queensbury. The first year, uh, we did very good numbers in both locations. Last year, Warrensburg fell off in numbers a little bit. In fact, I think we might have had maybe 30 cars last year in Warrensburg. This year, what we were proposing to do is do just one area. Uh, I don't have a preference of either or. I'm thinking Queensbury, and then every other year, we'll start to go back to Warrensburg. And then the last thing in your packet is the Warrensburg Fuel Farm. We had talked about that last committee meeting. Uh, the new fuel farm is up and running. There's the old fuel farm still needs to be taken out, uh, but I provided pictures in your packet. And there's some backfill and pavement work to be done um, once the weather breaks. Good project. Supervisor McGowan. When you talk about that hazardous waste there, sorry, just backstepping one there, uh, what would that be over on River, River Street or? Street? No, actually the one that we typically do in Queensbury, we use the Queensbury Towns facility. Uh, we set up the containers down there and the company comes in and they collect paint. Uh, uh, I don't necessarily think that they collect latex paint, oil-based paint, stains, uh, fluorescent light bulbs. Uh, I believe we've added propane tanks this year. Uh, there's probably a couple other items that I may be missing. I mean, like I said, I'm just trying to think of, you know, centrally located, you know. 
I mean, for the county, that would probably be almost Warrensburg. Uh, but we did, as I said, the numbers fell off in the last couple of years in Warrensburg. As I said, I don't think we, I think it was a total of 27 cars last year in Warrensburg, where I still think Queensbury had almost 150 vehicles. Well, we 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 hold, you know, Queensbury and Glens Falls probably the majority of the population of probably having so. Um, but I, I I think we ought to have a, a small smaller one, you know, maybe up north. I just hate to, you know, limit it to every other year because I know uh, it's a it's a great program to get these hazardous weights um, back into a recycled. Uh, and we do a, we do a lot of advertising for it. We do it on the, the county's website as well as put it in a newspaper. Uh, as the first year in Warrensburg, I think we had probably 110 to 120 cars, and it wasn't stri strictly Warrensburg. I mean, we had coming down from Hague, Hork, and uh, Johnsburg. But then last year it just fell off. So we figured if you know every couple of years they build up that material, uh, and then they could bring it back into into the Warrensburg site. Okay. But there isn't a problem with people from Hague and Warrensburg taking their stuff down. No, absolutely. They so can, there they can still bring is a place there. for them to go. But then I think about the population up north with how much they can accumulate in a year versus the number of people down here. I'm sure that's why it fell off last year. Okay. Sure. Anything else? Motion is there. Do we have a second? Everybody right below. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. <coughs>